Well, I was thinking that I, I don't know. I was told that maybe Parker Gray. William Gray was born in Was William? Yes. His father was William. Yes. But you see, and he married. I don't know when he was born. This up. He died. Oh, he died. Sarah Parker died in 1785. So they were only married eight years. And during that time, they had six children. Mm -hmm. Now, one of them, two of them were twins. And I didn't give you the names of the children this month. Who's uh, the granddaughter of William Gray was still living, and that her father had related his revolutionary uh, search. But you see that it, it being left, William Gray being left, was, um, and he was 19 when he met, being left was six children. And I don't think that would have been a number of That area up in that to Alabama. William. So it was because it was in a fall in eighteen I mean seventeen ninety five. And, and that with that stepmother, if she was his stepmother, there is a possibility that between the time they married and and William Gray died, which was in 1791, they could have had some additional children. Right. Right. And in that way, it could have connected it. Uh, now, in some of Sales' history of Alabama, history of Alabama, yes, he said that Parker Gray had a ferry over the Tallapoosa River in 1814. I never could find anything to verify that. But he was, Parker Gray was in South Carolina, as I told you this morning, right on the 
the border of Alabama and, and had a ferry over a river there between Georgia and Alabama line. And that's on an early map of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, so you see, they could have been migrating with my father's great stepmother. So they used to, you know, people used to take better care of the families than they do now. They just kind of bash them out. But that's true. They, 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 they traveled in units and they traveled in groups. Yeah. You see, I have, not knowing my James Gray's um, name of his wife, I do not know. Okay. I've tried to pick up from his children, from his grandchildren, perhaps a name or a surname that might have been his wife. Mm -hmm. And I look, I watch for that, those two or three names mm -hmm. also. Um, and my relatives have told me that uh, James Gray, first they were telling me that it was William F. Gray that came from England with his father. William F. came as a child, I was told, with his father. Well, when we found this paper in Alabama, I said, no, that's wrong. Your, y'all's memory is wrong. <laughs> um, of my, my darling relatives. Um, you know, people uh, take stories down and as they go, they get lost. But they're at least good clues. Oh yes, that was and, perfectly uh, alright because uh, of the fact that, um, when we found this James Gray, um, there's lots of Jameses that were came down the line, as in all families practically. Mm -hmm. But when we found this, and that he had a son, William F., a son, Richard L., and then the daughter. And it, I didn't know, and then he died in 1882, I mean 1822, and I don't know how old he was, but his oldest son that I know about, William F., they all these boys went to Fayette County and lived there. And then in the later years, some of them moved over to Rankin County, um, Mississippi, uh -huh. bought land and so forth. Some went to Arkansas. And some came to Anderson County, Texas, uh -huh. or in that area. Then now, in, where does the McCool family cut it, come in there? All right. Um, There's a McCool relation there, yes. because I have a correspondent with them. Yes, um, William F. Gray first married the daughter of Isaac Lansdale, the revolutionary soldier, uh -huh. and her name was Rachel. Uh -huh. And then uh, they had children, and one of their children uh, married Lafayette McCool. Uh -huh. I don't recall her name offhand, I forgot to get the folder before I came to the phone. Uh -huh. Um, that's a relationship there. Mm -hmm. So I know, I know a couple of men that are tracing, um, McCool, um, and I know a couple of women now that are tracing the Lansdale. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of them is in Mississippi and one's in Arkansas, and I just recently sent them a bunch of information that I had. Mm -hmm. But there is a monument, in case you don't know, there's a bronze plaque on the courthouse in Montgomery, Alabama, with the names of the revolutionary soldiers. Oh, is that right? Isaac Lansdale is one of them. Oh, all right. Uh huh, that's interesting. All right, there's William F. Gray, the oldest son. Uh huh. And uh, his wife, Rachel, died. I'm not really sure whether it was in Fayette or in Rankin, in Mississippi. But in 1880 census, he was living with um, a niece. And then he decided to come to Anderson County because he had um, at least one son. I guess he had two sons over there. So he came over there, and then he died. He lived there from one house to another, and he died in 1885. But before he died, they were making plans for a new cemetery around Grapevine, Texas. And he, according to the story goes, in, and in one book, that his influence caused them to name that cemetery and him. And that he had always told them, too, that he had his father's watch. And he wanted to be buried with his father's watch because that watch was very important to his father because he told him many times that he spent hours coming over on the ship looking at that watch. That was the only thing that basically he had was worth anything. 
And so I'm going by that story, but Antrim is Ireland, you know. Well, my and, and I have been told that James Gray was an Englishman. On one of the censuses, it says James, uh, the father, when you had the list, start right. listing father and mother. Well, for William F., it says father, uh, James Gray, uh, Englishman from England. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only thing I have to go by. But I'm thinking that's really funny that there is that Irish tone of Antrim, mm -hmm. which is in Tyrone County there. Um, or it's in the Tyrone, whatever they call it, municipality or whatever. In Texas. No, in, in Ireland. Oh, in Ireland. Okay. Uh-huh. So Antrim is very Irish. Yes. That it's an area there in Ireland, in Tyrone, in the Tyrone district. Um, and I have other people who came from in that area. And so I'm thinking, that's really odd. And I also read in a book, whether it's true or not, but I read it, <laughs> that because of um, certain persecutions of one type or of another, that some of the people who came um, from Ireland, uh, people were really making fun of their accent as they came over and went into areas. And therefore, a lot of the Irish people decided, I won't tell them I'm from Ireland. I'll tell them I'm from England. They like Englishmen. And so I thought that was odd, but I thought, yes, that could have been done. But so you know, I, they really persecuted the Irish when they first came to America. Well, so, you know, it almost made me want, and yet Gray always thought it was an English name. And it does sound, and my father said that he was Scotch-Irish. Scotch-Irish. Uh-huh. Well, see, I thought, well, maybe he he really was came from Tyrone area of Ireland, mm -hmm. but maybe he just came over and told him he was from England. You know, those things have, all these things go through your mind because you have to be That's versatile. To put, work it out. Well, you have to be versatile, right. Yeah. Um, but this is very interesting. But now, was it your William that was in the Revolutionary War? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And now here is what the lady had on her paper. All right. Uh, and I, I had some other references, but they marked through them and just took her statement. Let me see if I can read this. Um, um, from record on DAR uh, application, and do you want that number? It's uh, All right. one seven. Two four nine one. All right. It's stated under the third. Uh, a daughter of Joseph Gray of Jacob Gray. A daughter of Jacob Gray is still living and stayed that her father had often spoken of her, of the scars upon her grandfather's body. Now, J uh, Jacob was one of the twins that came right after my father. Scars upon her grandfather's body and of the long, hard service in the Revolutionary War. And she says that William Gray fought with Washington's troops. Hmm. And that is what they verified this paper as his service. Now, whether they checked out these other two things, because that was the proof of, on the paper that I referred to, I don't know, but I had two other references down there. Uh -huh. so they were from North Carolina records. Now, let me give you the names of, of 
William Blaze killed him and who they married, that might be a help to yes. find out in there. All right, he married Sarah Parker, and her father was Jacob Parker. Now, I did not discover that, but a gentleman in South Carolina wrote me that was working on this line and said that that was her father. He had verified that. So one thing I'll, I'll just throw in here before I forget it is that in trying to find where maybe this James Gray of mine came from, uh, I was told South Carolina. One relative said, oh, he probably came in at Charleston. Um, I have found some records of a James Gray, but it's, nothing has ever come with the right date that I thought was correct. But I've looked at the census in South Carolina. But I've also been looking, knowing that the Grays, the McCools, and the Lansdales, and I figured the Miles, because the, word, the name Miles is often in my Grays. Mm -hmm. And I figured that there was, that was a surname mm -hmm. originally. And I have found uh, some in Fairfield County, South Carolina. I haven't had the time to go deep enough into it yet. Um, but I, I really can't find a James Gray in that area, but I found Miles and McCool and the Ray family. And all of those intertwined in with um, the Gray family there in Fayette County. Mm -hmm. So that's one way I've been sort of watching. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I thought I'd forget to tell you. And that must be a proven record because there's no estimation on that, no CA. He was born in 1778, and he married Grace Gooding, G-O-O-D-I-N-G. -O -O Grace Gooding. Mm -hmm. And that was who now married Grace? Joseph Gray. And he was the first child of Parker and Martha? No, no, no. He is, he is the... So these are the second and third children of William Gray. Oh, right. I'm giving you William Gray's children. Okay. That was Joseph. And the twin was Jacob Gray, who was born 1778. All right. And he was married... Christ, the only one I have record of is Celia Malden, M-A-U-L-D-I-N. That was his first wife, and she evidently uh, died because they wrote something as a second marriage over here, but I, it's so dim I can't read it. And it's written with a fine pen. As I said, my eyes are horrible. All right. Is Jacob, we don't know his twin's name. Jo Joseph and Jacob were twins. Oh, they were the twins. Uh-huh. Okay. Both of them born in 1778. All right. Then the next child was Thomas Gray, and he was born in 1780. Now, that's an estimated date, a CA. Uh-huh. 1780. And he died unmarried, it says. All right. And Mary Gray died, uh, was born about 1782. All right. And it just says she died young. Mm -hmm. Then Martha Gray was born about 1784. Right. And it says she died young. All right. But then you see the mother died in 1785, and it's no wonder. I know. <laughs> Having them like that. Yes. But that left William Gray then with these children, and, and his oldest child would have only been about eight years old. That's right. So uh, it would stand to reason that he would have had to marry again. Yes, yes. 
to have taken care of those children, and that must be the Ms. William Gray that came to Alabama with Parker Gray. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But, um... I and now William came, did he, William came from South Carolina. I mean, William lived in South Carolina. Well, he, you know, there was a question over the border of Ab North and South Carolina. Oh, all right. However, this lady's paper said that he, um... Uh, I'll just put it William down. William Gray was born 1758 in North Carolina or Virginia. All right. That was a borderline change. Uh-huh. All right. I'll put that down. But then that North and South Carolina border, you know, when they were trying to determine the Mason-Dixon line, uh, there was a big dispute about the, those borderline cases as to whether they were in North or South Carolina. Right. Now, somebody in Crockettville, North Carolina, told me that there was a lady in um, uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, that had a lot of records on this family. And I think I told you this morning when I wrote to her, then I got a letter from her daughter saying that she had died about two weeks before my letter got there. So I got nothing out of that. But, but did you write her again? No, she lives somewhere out in the Midwest. The daughter? And, uh, and she said that she would let me know if she ever got around to getting into her mother's records and, you know... But she didn't give you her address? Yes, I have her address. She wrote me after she went back home. But now where that letter is... For if you find it... find it now... Uh -huh. ...would be almost <laughs> an impossibility... With my vision. Okay. Do you, do you have children that live near you? No, I don't have any children. Oh, okay. Got some nieces and nephews, though. Uh -huh. They're just reproducing like mad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's They're good. They're all my children, you know. I have two sisters. All right. Um, all right, let's see now. But uh, let me see. There was a... Oh, I told you about Mr. Peter Brandon's column that he wrote, and they are on record in the Alabama archives. Now, I don't know who he is. Peter? Uh, uh, Brandon, B-R-A-D-N-O-N. All right, and he now, wrote... he was the archivist at the time that he was writing all this business. And he's also the one that said in his column that Parker Gray came to Alabama with his widowed mother, Mrs. William Gray. Uh-huh. Now, whether Mr. Brannan was correct, I don't know. He, he did a lot of studying on Alabama, you know, on Alabama, because while he was in there. But he wrote some very interesting articles, and there was no question about the fact that 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 Parker Gray that came to Alabama, that is my ancestor, had a ferry over the Tallapoosa River. Uh-huh. Um, See, the, the, he had a ferry in South Carolina, and then he had one here. Right. These uh, articles that this Peter Brandon uh, wrote, have they been put into a book? No. They are, they are filed together in the archive, so... Mm -hmm. They're interesting, but not anything I don't think that you could pin down as a, you know, it would not be a document. Yes, no a, proof. Uh-huh. All right. But that is, and he, he did say that, but now I could find nowhere, I couldn't find out where Ms. William Gray, what happened to her. I don't have any record of her death. And she's not buried with Parker Gray in that graveyard. Mm-hmm. So, well, uh, See, what interested me, and in thinking that maybe there was a connection, and I mentioned it this morning, that is that um, 
my friend who was looking through the archives and library there um, said that he came across a paper where William F. Gray, who was a son of James, had signed a note for a Mrs. Bullard. For Mrs. Bullard. Uh-huh. In other words, he was uh -huh. back. For, for Mrs. Um, That's the gray who was a bullet. Is that what you mean? Well, he. I would assume it was for an older. Now, maybe it wasn't, but I assumed that it was for an older Mrs. Bullard. Well, it might. It is possible. But the older Mrs. Bullard, the mother of Martha D. Uh -huh. Gray, a Bullard Gray. Her parents were John and and uh, Judith Bullard, and they came to Alabama, according to his tombstone, in 1860. Oh, and he said spent the rest of his uh, rest of his life here. And it said that he came from North Carolina. Now, that's Bullard. But then he came from North Carolina through Tennessee because one of his daughters, Eliza Cunningham Bullard, married Lovick Pierce Butler. And she was born, according to the census, in 1814 in Tennessee. So you see, when he migrated, he came in there. I think John Bullard came in here with Andrew Jackson when they were uh, in the, involved in the War of 1812. And a lot of those, according to history down here, a lot of those men who came down with Andrew Jackson and then went on to New Orleans and of course, the war, before they fought New Orleans, the war was over, but they didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And um, then when they went back home, they came back to this area here in the forks of the Coosa and Tallapoosa River and settled. There were Rosses and, oh, just, and now the, the land map where they got land, Parker Gray got a section of land and he also got some land with an Israel Gray yes I've seen that name alright Israel Gray was the son of um uh, um uh, Joseph Cox Gray. I see. And right. his father, he, uh, Joseph Cox Gray's father, was Israel Gray. And they were in Jones County, North Carolina. And the reason I keep, I, I have kept trying to connect those two families, this Israel Gray who came to Montgomery County, in a record, in Jones County, North Carolina, it refers to him as Israel Gray of Montgomery County. Early record. Uh -huh. So that, I, I thought that since they got a land grant together, there had to be some relation there. Yes. Uh-huh. But uh, there is a book, if you can can uh, find it in your library, uh, Records of Jones County, North Carolina. Records of Jones County, North Carolina. By Nay, N-A-Y, Nay Hargett, H-A-R-G-E-T-T, -E I think is the way to spell it. I know her nice names. Uh, but I'm, uh, and it is nothing but, but court records and wills and census records. It's all records. Uh-huh. That's all right. Uh, but it. You can pick them out. Now, yeah. I never have looked for James Gray up in there. But then this Malden family, 
and the Gooding family. You see where Joseph and Jacob Gray married a Malding and a Gooding there in Jones County also. So it looks like at least some of the family moved over in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I got a copy of Israel Gray's will, and it sounds as contemptuous as the wills that have come on down <laughs> the hereafter. <laughs> he tied up everything hand and foot and said if the children left their uh, place of birth, that they had to give up their land to the ones that would stay. Oh, my. It just, it was uh -huh. just, just most amusing. Just a little bit but selfish. Then I had an uncle who left one even worse than that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that Papa's oldest brother. But it, that, uh, there may be something in that Jones County that, uh, you know, that might, if you can find the right. book. It's, uh, it's indexed. All right. Um. Where do you live near? I've forgotten. Well, I'm right up in the northwest corner of the state, and I'm about 112 miles northwest of Birmingham. All right. And about 75 miles due west of Huntsville, Alabama. But I came from Montgomery County, Alabama, which is the capital of the state. I came from Wayne, a little town just below uh, Montgomery, 25 miles south of Montgomery. I see. All right. And my two sisters are still living. My older sister's 83, and my next one's 81. And she has just gone home last Saturday, last Sunday from up here. And if she had been here, you know, I could, she could have helped me. Her vision's not real good. The 83-year-old one can read in the dark. But I don't know. I've had cataract surgery and and then blind in one eye. So Ida and I have more trouble, but Ida hasn't had the surgery yet, so she, she's doing, she can read fairly good. Uh, are but you, I'm just out of it. You see how poorly I'm just picking out word by word trying to read you what was on that paper. Well, you did pretty good. You did very good, and I really do appreciate your help. Well, at least gave um, you time to write in between while yes. I try to figure out the word. Didn't right, you? right. That's, <laughs> that's right. And I'm, well, I'm going to try to put this all together and see what I come up with, and um, then um, I'll get, write you another little letter, and we'll see what we have here. All right, I, I'm sorry I can't give it to you. In, in fact, I would be glad to go down and have it, but I don't drive anymore. Well, that, that's all right. That's all right. And, and I just, what I have here is just a matter of, I think I might have an extra copy of my DAR paper. I well, could that's, send that's you if that would help you. I've given you what's on it. Well, that's all right. I'm going to put all this together, and then I'll give you another little letter. I'd be real interested in knowing. Now, another thing I want to tell you, in you know, in the old files, in the drawers, where the original papers were filed, mm -hmm. uh, James A. Gray, and I'm pretty sure that it was a James A. Gray, he, a lot of his documents were filed in that drawer with Parker Gray, and they did not have James A. Gray indexed up in the courthouse. This was down in the basement, you know, in the original file. All right. I'll and that's tell what I was working primarily out of those. Parker Gray left his will so that the estate would stay in contact until 